Distinguished clergy, Vice President Biden, Governor McMaster, other distinguished elected officials to this great family, Michael, entire family. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here with you today and to help celebrate the life and legacy of one of South Carolina's most outstanding public, public servants. When I first was asked <clears throat> a few hours after Fritz passed what I thought of Fritz Hollins, I said he was one of a kind statesman. I felt that because Fritz Hollins demonstrated with every ounce of his body, every modicum of his intellect, he demonstrated that he was one of a kind. There's a classic point which begins, thank God a man can grow. He is not bound by earthly gazes on the ground. No matter from which he came, our poor or low, thank God a man can grow. What is implicit in that poem's refrain is that all men do not grow. But all men can. Fritz Hollins demonstrated that time and time again. I wrote in my memoirs, Blessed Experiences, I wrote that we can be no more nor will we ever be any less than what our experiences allow us to be. Fritz grew up in a neighborhood near here, near where I stand today and you sit. He attended this historic military institution. He graduated, he went off to serve in the army during World War II. He came back and attended the University of South Carolina School of Law, a segregated school of law. Graduated in 1947, and one year later, he ran for the state legislature, and he got elected to an all-white body. Several years later, he ran for lieutenant governor. The year was 1954. So in 1954, Fritz becomes Lieutenant Governor and the United States Supreme Court. Decided that separate but equal was inherently unequal. Now, that decision grew out of a court decision here in Charleston where the minority vote, the dissenting opinion, was written by another Charlestonian. 1948, the same year. That Fritz was elected. Then Fritz gets to the legislature and Governor Burns, realizing the wisdom that existed in a young man who wrote the legislation uh, to attempt to equalize black and white schools with a three cent sales tax. Governor Burns realizing what was in this young man. Named him as a part of the team 
that will go into the federal courts to defend separate but equal. Fritz and I talked about that often. I would teach him about being uh, subjected uh, to uh, the wisdom of, uh, of Matthew Perry and uh, uh, Thurgood Marshall and others. Fritz used to joke to me all the time. He said, now look, I want you to understand. I was on the team. Then Fig did the argument. I carried his bag. At any rate, when that decision came down, I have no idea when Fritz began to change. I read that Bishop James on yesterday talked about Fritz the person. They knew each other very personally. And Bishop James said he had something in him. I always believe that if it's in you, whatever it is, eventually it's going to come out. And that's what happened with Fritz Allen's. It came out. And I think it was on national display when Fritz stood before the legislature here in South Carolina shortly after our second meeting. Now the first time I met Fritz, I received a phone call from Sister Mary Anthony. Some of you may remember Sister Mary Anthony. She ran the Our Lady of Mercy neighborhood house uh, over on Charleston's east side. And she called me back in 1969 and she said to me, I want you to uh, come and walk with me and Senator Hollins. Uh, I'm some things here on Charleston east side uh, that he wants to to get to know about a little bit better. We took him on what was the first leg of Hollins's poverty to us. It was January 1969. Now, that was our really second meeting because when Fritz was serving as governor, it was, he got elected my second year at South Carolina State. And some of you may remember what was going on the campus of South Carolina State back in the 1950s and uh, it's most especially in 1960. I was helping to organize sit-ins and we were challenging a status quo that Fritz, because of his experiences, felt obliged to protect. And this, our first meeting, he invited us protesters to Columbia, to his office, to sit down and talk with him about what was on our minds. And we did. He opened up to us, we opened up to him, and we felt good about that meeting. Because what was in it came out in that meeting. But then we got to the door, about to leave, and Fritz stopped us. He said, now, when you all walk outside of this door, there's going to be a throng, throng of news people. They will all ask you what I said. Don't say anything to them that I'm going to need to deny. He gave me my first lesson 
and plausible deniability. I'm so moved by that. Until this day, I have never shared with anyone what we talked about in that meeting. But I knew that we had just heard and felt what was in it. And it all came out just before he left the governorship. He was challenged by another Charlestonian, Harvey Gay, who sued to enter Clemson. There was resistance all over the country. But thank God, a man can grow. And when Fritz stood before the legislature, he said to them, 1962, we have run out of courts and we are a nation of laws, not men. We are going to do this and we're going to do it with dignity and civility. Harvard again, peacefully integrated Clemson. Why? Because a man can grow. Not all men will, but Fritz Hollins did. And when we finished that Harvard tour that day and Sister Anthony and I sat down with him, I knew that something would come of it. And of course, all of us remember his writing the book, The Case Against Hunger. I think he visited 15 counties around that time. A lot of the people are a little bit upset about that because, you know, we, we, we value our history, we value our tourism. And there were people who actually felt that calling attention to this issue would be ruinous to the state. Fritz was trying to prevent ruining lives. So he took the risk. In his book, The Case Against Hunger, he laid the foundation for what became the Women, Infants, and Children program. He laid the foundation for a significant expansion in the food stamp program. Fritz Hollins became a champion of community health centers. And we experienced a significant national expansion. It is when I began to emulate Fritz Hollins. Now, uh, I've often been called a black edition of Fritz Hollins. I sometimes wonder how to accept that. Because knowing Fritz, as many of you did, uh, Fritz's uh, sarcasm could be pretty biting. And of course, uh, not all that welcome by some. His wit and wisdom was of such. You would always hope that when the comparison was being made, it would be on the wit and wisdom side. But Fritz, to me, was something else. I've studied his governorship. And I think a lot about what South Carolina is today. And I go back to that little piece of legislation written by John West at the invitation of Fritz Hollis that created the South Carolina technical education system. 
and it failed my lot to have both those men in my life. I feel blessed because of Fritz Hollins. He was my mentor. Never formally so, and I doubt that he ever knew it. But getting the phone call from Fritz Hollins was a blessing. And I got them often. He was very often telling me how to conduct myself. <laughs> and I listened to him. And quite frankly, I didn't just listen. I acted on his suggestion. So many things that I have been able to do never would have happened without his wise counsel. Now the ultimate in Fritz's growth took place several years ago when he called me and it was not unusual for me to get a call so when I got the call from Fritz I'm, I'm, I just thought it was another one incident for me to clean up my act or do something. But this time it was different. This call was different. Fritz said to me, I want you to sponsor a piece of legislation to take my name off this courthouse. And I asked him, why should I do that? And he said to me, because it would be much more appropriate for the name of Jay Wittes Waring to be on that courthouse. Now knowing South Carolina's history as I do, I knew that it was Jay Wittes Waring who wrote that descending opinion disagreeing separate but equal. I knew that it was Jay Wittes Waring the rule to equalize black and white teachers' pay. I knew that it was Jay Wade as who uh, issued the decision in 1948, the year that Fritz was elected, uh, that the Democratic primary must be opened up to black voters. I knew all of this about Jay Wade as well. And now I'm saying to myself, now. Fritz is asking me to take his name off the courthouse and put Jay Wittes Waring's name on it. I hung up. I called him back later. And for 45 minutes, he lectured me on South Carolina's history as if I didn't know any of it. But when I told him the danger of my doing that, he said in the old Charleston bro, you just do it. I got your back. He convinced me to do it. And so we put up the legislation. It passed the House. It passed the Senate. It's my great honor to come down in, in the sanctuary of St. Michael because the weather conditions, we took the name off and Fritz spoke. I was driven to the tears on that day. Because I thought I knew South Carolina well, and I thought I knew Fritz Hollis well, but I found out that day 
that did not know him as well as I thought I did. There was much more to him than I had ever experienced. And I can only say today, thank God, a man can grow. Fritz grew, and I grew along with him. Uh -huh.